Hello, and to all of our PSR students and families, I know that this has been a very trying time for all of us, and I hope that all of our students are well and that we'll see each other in person very soon. I want you to know that we do truly miss you. As many of you already know, all of our PSR teachers and staff have been discussing about how best to proceed in the current coronavirus situation. We were hoping to begin on Tuesday, September 8th with in-person classes, but after our last meeting, we were all in agreement to postpone the start of in-class instruction at least through the first nine weeks of school. But the question came up, what do we do in the meantime? Of all the options available, we decided to try something completely new and out of the box. I hope that you'll find it interesting, unique, and something of value for your family. In this video, I'll explain what our plan is and how we're going to help you. But first, a story. The story of this priest who's walking down the street one day comes across this homeless guy. Well, the homeless guy asks the priest for some money. Well, the priest wants to help him and his heart goes out to him. So he pulls out his wallet and he kind of thumbs through and sees what he's got. He realizes he's got a lot of money. He counts it up real quick and realizes it's $168. So the priest pulls out all the money from his wallet, all $168, gives it to the homeless man. But as the priest turns to walk away, he realizes he's got to get back to the church. So he turns back and asks the homeless guy if he can have a dollar back so that he can catch the bus to get back to the rectory. The homeless man gives him the dollar, but as the priest turns to walk away, the homeless man picks up a bottle hits the priest on top of the head and knocks him out, takes the last dollar and then runs away. So think about it. If somebody asked you what you thought of the homeless man, what would you say? He's pretty greedy, isn't he? He's already got $167. Why can't he be happy with that? Why would he need that last dollar back? Well, I've shared this story for a reason because it has a lot of interesting points for us. So if you're good at math, how many hours in a week are there? Well, if you figured it out, it's 168 hours in a week. And think about that. God only asks for us to give us one hour a week back to him. Just one hour a week for church. One hour a week for contemplation. One hour a week that's away from everything else in this world. So what does the story tell us? Well, first of all, realize that God has given us everything that we have, right? God gives us life. Therefore, all of the time that we have within a week has been given us. God only hopes that we can give a little back to him to show him our appreciation. Second, really, is it too much to ask that we take some time to contemplate all that God has done for us? Think about it. If God created the entire universe and everything in it, that means he created us created you, he created me. The least we can do is take some time to contemplate the awesome being that we call God. Think of it, in all of the universe that he cares for each of us beyond what we could ever imagine. Think about that. Third, and this is one of the most profound parts of this new program, is we want you to spend time as a family learning about this awesome God. You see, the family is the place where we learn the most important things in life. It's also the place where what we learn takes hold the most. So let's begin this journey together. So what are we asking? Well, it's really very simple. Spend some time each week together as a family, simply talking with each other. Spend a few moments, perhaps an hour, in conversation about many things, some more important than others, but always vital, because within this process, our families will grow, both individually and together. So what do you say? Can you give God a little back of what he has given you? I hope you said yes, even if it was just in your hearts. We'll help you and we'll guide you and we'll make it very easy for you. Each week you'll receive an email that'll give you a link to a short video like this one. The email will also have a set of questions that you should use to guide your discussion. If you prefer, We'll also offer these questions on a PowerPoint presentation that you can hook up to a computer or a television. That's your thing. We will have all of these resources available in the church office as well, just in case that makes it easier for you. 
So you see, we're not abandoning you. We'll be on this journey with you to guide you each step of the way. But first, let me say a few words before you begin. First, trust the process. This program was designed to walk you through a specific path. Even if you don't think that it's something of value, everything in this program has a point. Once we get to the end of the journey, hopefully you'll see the purpose of the method that's being used. Second, try to be faithful about doing this regularly. Set aside time for your family each week. Make it purposeful. Lord knows it's easy to let things slip and get away these days, but it's going to take some effort to make sure that you're faithful to the plan. Last, there's no homework, at least not in the sense of what you think of as homework. Now, we may give you something to think about or pray about during the week, but that's only intended to make you to make the next gathering fruitful. Remember, if you want to grow something in your garden, you got to do a little work. You got to get your hands dirty and you got to fertilize the garden. But in the end product will be much better. So how's that sound? Are you ready to begin? If so, we'll see you in the first video. Also, after this process is done, let us know how things went for you. That'll make help the next session even better. So let's end with a short prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear Lord, you've given us everything. You've given us life. You've given us faith. You've given us our families. Please bless us. Bless all of those right now who are going through troubled times, dear Lord and help us in all things that we do to learn to know you, to love you, and to serve you more each day. We ask all of this in the name of your son, Jesus, who gave us everything. Thank you, dear Lord, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God bless.